Thanks. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the joint meeting of the Historical Commission and the Historic District Commission. It is Tuesday, March 15th, and it's 6.01 p.m. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. So I will first do a roll call of the Historical Commission. Uh, Ruben Amaral. Present. Connie Soul. Here. Richard Mancini. Yes, via Zoom. Joyce Rodericks. Present. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira present by Zoom. All of the attendees tonight are attending uh, remotely by Zoom. And next, I will do a roll call for the Historic District Commission. Connie Soul. Here. Richard Mancini. Yes, via Zoom. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Here. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira here by Zoom. And all of tonight's attendees for the Historic District Commission are attending remotely by Zoom. Do we have any citizen input this evening? Okay, I just, um, before we start, I just wanna say hello to uh, Felicia Damaris. She's from the Fall River Public Library and she's just kind of sitting in and uh, listening and watching to see what it is that we do. She's working on some, um, some special collections over the library and some of it has a lot of historic value. So at some point she will probably be coming to us for either some um, advice or a letter of support. So she's sitting in on the meeting. Hi, Thank Felicia. You. Yep. Hi, Hello, Felicia. Uh, well, thank you. Okay, so first up on the agenda, we have Notice of intent to demolish structure. We did not receive any uh, notifications to demolish anything this month. And uh, second is we received a correspondence from the Nova Group on behalf of T-Mobile regarding telecommunication towers at 326 North Main Street. Um, and what they want to do is just put up towers, uh, uh, put up, um, antennas and they they already have them there it's not anything new for that location so what i can do is i can send that around to all of you because i just got that and you can take a look at it and then if you have any issues with it just let me know and uh we can we can discuss it at the next meeting mm -hmm. okay then uh, moving on, old business, uh, 518 High Street electrical panel update. So we did, I know I sent it around to all of you. Um, we did receive the, um, the updated uh, rendering from Corky and I asked him to be here at the meeting so that we could uh, have any follow-up questions for him and, and any thoughts and concerns. So uh, thank you for attending. Sure, my pleasure. And I will uh, let you all start. I don't know if, if Corky, if you have anything that you want to say first, or if the, the board has questions. Um, not really. I had also asked our electrician to um, to join, but I'm not sure if he's able to make it. Um, Ray Mellinson. Uh, also, I did um, speak with the uh, National Grid representative who actually came out and they were actually the ones that proposed um, this, this alternative approach to take it off the, uh, the meter off of the building and, and put it on a small pedestal um, in the yard. Uh, there is a requirement that it be um, accessible outside, um, which I also confirmed with the fire department that there's a um a master cutoff basically that if there's a fire the, the fire department can 
basically cut off all electricity to the house in, in one shot. So that's the reason why uh, we couldn't leave it down in the basement. So that's that's it. Nothing um, nothing else. Uh, just a just a question for you, Corky. Did anybody bring up the fact that you can put a shunt trip breaker out there and put a fireman's key by your front door, and that would serve the purpose of disconnecting power? I I talked to the fire department. They didn't mention that as an option. Ah, okay. Because that that's would have been a very inexpensive alternative for you. Well, I can always ask the fire department if that's if that's acceptable, and also National Grid if they have a mechanism for doing um, something like that. I had that's that's, not... that's your contractor, Corky, that would supply that. And and that's um, that I'm sure would meet the require. I know it would meet the requirements of your uh, enforcing authority, which is the electrical inspector. <clears throat> so just just a question I'm throwing out there. You know, I'm trying to make things easier for you. So can you give me the just repeat um, what this device is? What what it is? It's called a shunt trip breaker. What you have out in your panel now is a regular manual breaker that you physically go over and, and turn off if required. With a shunt trip, you can do that by just disconnecting the, uh, by, by throwing a little switch actually. And you have a firefighter key that are on most commercial buildings. Firefighters, when they go into a building, they want to get into the doors. Well, you can put that same system on your door and it would be a little switch. They would open the box, flip the switch, it would shut the breaker off. They're, they're quite common shunt trip breakers. And, and uh, I know that this inspector would have no, no problems at all with that. Okay. And the other alternative would be check the raceway coming into your building. Uh, see if it's adequate for uh, new conductors. And if it is, then that would make it you, it, it would have eliminated the need to do all of the piping that you did. You might just, you know, just something you can throw out there and, and uh, check. Well, the, the, the current design um, was what was proposed by National Grid. So I figured that that was, um, there was a reason why they were proposing that. So I, I didn't realize um, that there might be alternatives. You assume that the professionals know what they're talking about. Well, they really have. It's again, it's, as I explained to you at your, at your initial meeting, it's the authority enforcing the code that determines all of that, not the utility company. And uh, the utility company's uh, a jurisdiction ends at your property line. So. Right, and that's why we have the, the current setup that we have, which mm -hmm. brings the line from the house to proper line basically and then they can sure. it into it sure yeah well i have no problem i personally with the pedestal uh, up along the fence that i have no problem with that it's just an expensive way uh, that that you have to you know that you have to go to meet that standard well at this point um either i i'm gonna have to move the meter one direction or another so um that seemed to be pretty straightforward based on um, what the electrician and national grid said. So that's why I was going to go with that route. Sure. But uh, it's interesting. I wish I had known about the uh, shunt trip breaker that might have made life a lot easier. Yes. Yeah. And and that raceway in mo in many cases is adequate for the new uh, THHN cables. So it, it would have been no digging at all. Just pull new cables in. But that you have to check to make sure that conduct the raceway is large enough. I think they actually had looked at that and it's not. Um, okay. It's the old, it's very old. <laughs> yep. So yeah, we, we did look at that part and that, that wasn't gonna work. Okay. Okay, Good. Connie, oh. Connie or Jason, do you have any uh, questions, thoughts, anything? No. No. Mm -mm. Well, I would, I would, if there were no other questions, I would make a motion that we accept the pedestal out by the, by the um, I do have actually one question. Um, will the pedestal be 
taller than the fence that's in front of the house? Um, probably by um, three to six inches. Okay. Well, that brings up another question because I actually thought it was going to be the same level as the fence. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to be? Is it going to be? Like, is there a carpenter that's going to do something like a housing around it, so it it doesn't just look like a pedestal with something like a, uh, an electric meter stuck on it? Um, we can certainly look into that. You know, again, I'm I'm relying upon. The uh, you just say if it sits like kind of like center of your property, I can't imagine that you really are, are going to enjoy that view either. So, I believe me, I'm, I'm what I'm not enjoying right now is all the mud around the house because I can't make any progress on it right now. So, um, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, if if we can build an enclosure for the meter, um, which will still meet the um, fire department's requirements for access, which I don't see why we couldn't do that, then that would be fine with me. I would actually be very comfortable with that. Okay. The meter, I know the meter is supposed to be, it's facing the house, correct? It's correct. not, it's away from the street. So right. you won't see that. But if if there's a way to just build a little something around it that way, even like as you're walking, if you're not kind of seeing it right from. Right. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's a, a quite a reasonable idea. So we have a motion. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, the electrical panel on a pedestal. I will do a roll call vote. Connie Soule? Yes. Rich Mancini? Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki? Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveri? Yes. So motion is approved. Um, I will send a letter to uh, to the building department so that you can. Uh, so that you can get that done. Or actually, you know what, I'll send it right to you. Okay, that sounds great. Yep, I'll send it in an email. Okay, thank you very right. much. Thank you. Have a good evening. You hey, too. too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Okay, uh, moving on, 710 Rock Street, the uh, porch update, I did, uh, reach out to attorney Rumsey and I have not heard back yet from him. Um, I did, I did ask him, I told him what it was that we wanted to do, that we wanted to send a letter, um, giving, giving the owner 90 days to, from the receipt of the letter to make, uh, the, 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 the uh, revisions the, the, uh, that, that will meet our approval. And if they don't, then we could enforce up to a hundred dollar a day fine. So I did ask him legally if that would be acceptable uh, based on the current um, historic district commission ordinance. So I'm just waiting to hear back. And as soon as I do, I can, if, if he says it's okay, I will draft up the letter. And if not, then I will let you all know what it is we need to take for the next step. I, none of you heard from the homeowner at this point, right? No, okay. Yeah, yeah no, no one has. Okay, uh, moving on merger of the Historical Commission and Historic District Commission. Um, I know Jason, had you heard anything? Yes, it was uh, it was to go on their last meeting on the ordinance committee. Uh, for some reason, it was not added. Um, I did reach out to uh, Pam um, La Liberty, and it is uh, she has asked that it go on to the next meeting, which I sh I think they do. I think ordinance has two meetings a month, so it should be in the next couple of weeks, whatever that is. So I was told that it is on the agenda. Okay, okay. I I'm going to reach out because I want to be at the meeting so yep. well we also sent out an email 
to the entire board and we have not heard back from any one of them. And I CC'd you on it, Kristen. I didn't get an email. Yeah, I, I sent an email to everyone on the board. Uh, we talked about it and I sent it out to them. When do you remember when you sent it? I'm just almost a month ago because I actually looked it up today because I wanted to see. see. Um, sorry, I'm on my phone, so it's like no, it's okay. I'm just I'm looking too. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, I sent it to the whole board. Yep, you did. Okay, that was Wednesday, February 23rd. Yep, and I... Um, no response whatsoever? Nope, um, I was gonna do a follow-up, um, but I see Jason has, but um, I did send the email basically asking uh, when it was gonna be before them and if they could respond to let us know I mean, you can read it if you want. Okay, let me read it out. Let me just find it again. Hold on. Connie, I didn't, Do you I didn't have it up it. or? What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you send it to, to all of us? I didn't receive anything. No, no. I, oh, I oh, sent oh. it to Sean Kadeem. Um, I'm yeah, I'm going to read it. Hold okay, on. why don't you do it? Yeah, that was back in at the end of February, so I had forgotten all about that. Uh, hang on. Okay, so it was sent to Councillor Kadeem, Councillor Dion, Councillor Lee, Councillor Raposo, and Councillor Kilby, and I was CC'd on it. So it says, good afternoon, the Historic Commission and the Local Historic District Committee are looking for an update on the status of the potential merger between the two committees. We understand that it has been moved to ordinances and legislation committee and request an update. We have been waiting on this merger for over two years and hope that now that it's before your committee, we will be moving forward. Connie Sewell, City of Fall River Historic Commission, Local Historic District Commission. So that's what the email was that Connie had sent. And so she has not received a response. That's a little disconcerting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it, it, it's bothersome that we didn't even get an acknowledgement that they would at least look into it uh, from any of them. Right, from any. It's not like you only sent it to one. So I think um, I, I, tomorrow I'm going to make a phone call. At least, at least one. I will reach out to Councilor Dion. I, I believe she's the chair. Correct. I think so. Okay. So I'm going to give her a call, and if I get no answer, I'll reach out to Councillor Kadeem. I at least want to find out if we definitely are on the agenda and when, because I want to be able to be at that meeting. And uh, I'll, Connie, I'll, I'll let you know, too, as vice chair. I think we should both be there. OK, thank you. OK. Um, anything else? Anything else anybody wants to say? Joyce, Rick, Ruben? No, I'm back online. Somebody interrupted us with a phone call, so I apologize for that. Well, that's okay. Okay, um, so moving on, preservation guidelines, discussion and vote on drafts. So the only, um, the only response that I got, I know I, I had asked you all to um, to look the rest of them over and let me know if there was anything, um, any other comments or concerns that you had before I send them all to uh, Dominique. And I have the original ones, which was, we had talked about the last month, the masonry and the stucco about is steam cleaning allowed? Um, it's allowed in Rhode Island, is it allowed in, in uh, Massachusetts, what does it fall under? Should that be included? And then is laser cleaning acceptable? 
and what wattage. So that we already have to send to her. And then I did receive an email from Joyce. So Joyce has said she has only one observation and it's regarding roofing. And it says guidelines for roofing page 3-08 gutters. Suggest adding information on gutter protection equipment such as gutter guards, gutter helmet and leaf filter. I would place the gutter section under the heading roof features and accessories not under roof decks. I'm sorry, does that mean we're, we're suggesting to add that? Yeah, that's, Joy that's what Joyce is suggesting. She's suggesting to add some information on gutter protection equipment like the gutter um, helmet and leaf filters, the gutter guards, and that it should be placed under the section, under a, a section called roof features and accessories rather than roof decks. I so, Joyce, do you want to speak a little I, more to that? Well, I noticed that because on the roofing accessories, they talk about the addition of solar panels. So my thought was that anything like um, leaf protection uh, might be considered an accessory. I actually don't agree with that, um, that recommendation. That's me personally. Um, I can show you pictures of um, the damage that those uh, protectors actually cause with gutters, um, we've had it, I've had it right here in the 40C district. Um, I actually have videos of, of it and um, pictures. So I personally would not recommend that be an accessory to use on a historic property. So then should we have something in there just basically saying that we don't well, he could ask them, you know, you know what I mean? Just to say that, because if that question comes up and somebody wants to know, are, are they allowed on historic? Why don't we ask Dominique her professional opinion since she, this is what she does. And so maybe inquiring with her. Okay, so that's what I'll do. Did anyone else have anything, any other things that they noticed or wanted to? Ruben looks like he does. Yeah, um, <clears throat> honestly, they're pretty well done. And the only addition I have is under exterior wood uh, section about artificial trim. She mainly discusses PVC trim and I brought this up when we were discussing this with her back in August. I think that composite trim should be really included. So it doesn't expand as much as PVC. So the gaps that you need around it aren't as great and they're much more, they hold paint much better than PVC. Uh, so like a poly ash trim, doesn't have to say that, but a composite trim should be added in there. So people have that option. And it actually looks more like wood than PVC. I recall us talking about that with her. Yeah. Okay, so I'll ask her to add that too. Do you, um, do you feel like we need to have another meeting with her? Do we need to have her um, as like be here for any, discussion now would you want to just send her our thoughts and then see what she responds back I mean I, I don't feel that we necessarily need her to to be at a meeting right now I just I, I want to make sure that you guys are all I think if you summarize that the requests and then send it to her and then if she can send the if we can just see the updated sections okay. that should suffice instead of a full meeting Okay. I think that's my opinion. 
I agree with that. And I, I concur with you also. Okay, so that's what we'll do. So I'll send her all the things we discussed, the possible changes, um, questions, and then I will ask her once the changes are made just to send us the updated sections and then we can look at that and go from there. Sounds good. Okay. You can see where she's uh, put this program together in other areas because all of the little nuances that you pick up as you go along seem to be in here. So I, I, I thought it was a very well done document also. Yeah. I thought it was an education in itself because you need a lot more background than I have to understand all of the comments that were made. I mean, you need a building experience, engineering experience. So I'm keeping all those in a in my binder and refer to them every so often when I need to have more information. I think the great thing is that once this document is finished, anybody will have access to this. So anybody that's working on a property in the city, a historic property is gonna have access to it and they will, in essence, know what it is that they need to do. And then if they're working with a contractor that maybe hasn't done it before, the contractor will have access to this and it'll just answer so many more questions and hopefully alleviate some of the issues that we found in the past of, you know, damage inadvertently being done by something being done the wrong way to a historic property. So, and definitely um, it'll help us when we're making decisions in the district itself because everything is gonna be there in black and white. So it's a lot easier to say to a homeowner, these are our expectations. This is how something really should be done. And, you know, it is easier to explain it to somebody when you have it there in black and white, when you have um, the reasoning behind something, when you have photos and images of how something should look or why something should look a certain way. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, any other comments on that? Okay, so I will send those to Dominique. Uh, do you want to take a vote on that, Connie? Uh, Kristen? Do you want okay. to take a vote on that, that it's all, it's just acceptable to, to send to her? Uh, if you want, if, yeah, if you want to make a, if you want to make a motion, we can, that's fine. Okay, I, I would make a motion that we vote on that, uh, on, on the uh, uh, current uh, program and get it to Dominique as a positive or a negative comment. You mean what we have already sent yes. in as our comments that you want to accept all the comments and send them to Dominique? And, and accept the written uh, uh, proposal at this point. You mean once she makes the changes or in anticipation of the changes? In anticipation. In other words, the document now is is appears to be very well done. And right. We're going to just add a few more, uh, just a few changes that we'd like to make. But I would vote to accept it if that's my motion to s send that to her so that we get the board to approve it. We, we have not approved it as such at this time. Okay. So I have a motion to accept what has been written so far the sections that have been sent to us once the changes are made um do so before before i ask for a second so my only my only thing on that is we we had some questions for her that haven't been answered yet which is is steam cleaning allowed and what would it fall under and can we add it or should it be included? And then is laser cleaning acceptable? So there's, there's questions too that, I mean, as long as you feel fine with her writing up those sections without us seeing them before we approve them, that's- And the thing. composite um, material. Yeah and the, yeah, and the composite um, as well. And 
just asking her, should we include anything on gutters and um, gutter accessories? So, um, so we, I mean, certainly you can, you can make the motion. I know that there are still some questions out there that we don't know the answers to yet. So, um, so I, I, I hear you loud and clear. I'll, I'll resend that and uh, I'm just trying to get this process completed. It's been dragging on, right? you know, shorten it up, but I, I'll, I'll uh, pull that off the table and, and, and go along with waiting. Well, if, you, if you send her this, uh, the information that we want to pass along for her to update, perhaps if she sends it to us and then maybe we could either have a special meeting just for that to approve it mm -hmm. or if it takes longer then we could have it at our next meeting yeah that's absolutely absolutely that way we can move it along yeah okay so we have two guideline drafts that are approved it's the other two that need some adjustments or do we want to just tell her okay on those two and then wait for her changes on the other two documents? So the composite one is one that, that we are saying that we're fine with, right? So she didn't add it, right? Yeah, she didn't. She'll just have to add it. So the yeah, roofing, she... and, roofing and windows seem like we don't have any comments on. So oh, think... you, you, oh, you mean the sections that we have no comments on to yeah. approve those? Yeah, then that would be a good that would be a good thing to do. Yeah. So if we want to, if either Rick or Ruben, if you want to make a motion on the sections that we have no questions on, then certainly we can tell her those are are approved. So if you want to just make a motion and tell me which sections we are definitely approving, and I will tell her that. Sure, I'll uh, make a motion to approve the HD guidelines for roofing, and for windows and doors. Well, Joyce's question on the gutters, gutter accessories, uh, does that fall under roofing? It, it did. It did come under roofing. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, I didn't know if we were proceeding with adding that into there. Well, I know Connie had said we should just ask her. Okay. If if um, in her professional opinion, something like that should be allowed because it is a question that will, that may come up. So we should at least know what to say when somebody asks us that question. My fault. So I'll make a motion to approve the, at least the guidelines for windows and doors. Okay. So I have a motion to approve the guidelines for windows and doors and let her know that. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, motion in a second. Uh, roll call vote. Okay, so I'm going to do both. I'm going to do both commissions separately. Uh, so Historic District Commission, Connie Soule. Yes. Rick Mancini. Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveri. Yes. Okay, now Historical Commission, Connie Soule. Yes. Joyce Rodericks. Yes. Rick Mancini. Yes. Uh, Ruben Amaral. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveri. Yes. So, okay. So windows and doors is approved by both commissions and the other ones we have, um, we have questions on those. So those we will send her the changes. And as soon as she sends them back, I will let you know, and we can decide if we're going to have a special meeting for it, or if we're just going to include it in the next meeting. Okay. Uh, so next up, new business, uh, 259 Prospect Street, and they were working on roofs without notification to the Historic District Commission. And I'm going to let Connie Soule talk about this one because she, um, it, she was the one that initially saw this happening. And this is, uh, this is the Deaconess home. So Connie, if you want to yeah, uh, I, uh, I saw it happening. I contacted you because I didn't know if maybe they had reached out to us and I missed something. Um, I called the building department. Um, they did pull a permit 
uh, and it was an error on the building department. Um, so I, uh, Kristen, I think you spoke with Frank from the building department who. Yeah, I can, if you want me to take it from. Yeah, take it from there. Okay. So I, I called the building department after Connie told me that they had actually approved the permit and I was not happy about that. Um, and I spoke with Frank and he did say that he had in error given a permit and he apologized. And I expressed our concerns that it has happened um, a little more frequently than, than we would like, because I mean, even one time is more frequently than we'd like, but this is already, I believe the third time now something has happened in the district. And I said that there needs to be some kind of a better system in place for the building department to check because it really is only 47 properties. So it should not be happening. It's not, uh, it's not like they have a list of 500 properties that they need to look through. So Frank's thought on that was to contact the IT department and see if there was a way that the IT department could put some type of a flag on the 47 properties in the computer so that when the building department goes to look them up, an automatic flag of some type pops up so that they know it's in um, it's in the district and that they know that they can't issue any permits until they have our permission. I don't know yet. I haven't heard back from Frank to let me know um, if the, if the uh, IT department has come up with a way to do that. But I, I'm going to reach back out to him, but I also wanted to have this discussion before I reach back out to him in case you all have any other suggestions or ideas uh, that I can share with Frank and or IT. So it was, it was right before, it was like the day or two before the really bad storm that we were gonna be having. So rather than, cause it, he, initially was going to tell them to stop altogether and the roof was was pretty much torn apart so connie and i felt that rather than make them cover it up and and risk a lot of damage to the property in the storm to let them just finish at least the the roof on the house i know i don't, I don't think they did the garage one did they connie they did it all they weren't frank was supposed to just have them do the one they did it all um, and, and it, the other reason we're, why we decided that too, was because it was no fault of the, of theirs, right? It really was the building department that, you know, slipped up. So, um, and with the storm coming, I just, it, it, it just risked the property to, um, you know, put it at high risk for some kind of water damage or whatever unnecessarily. Right. But I, I, I guess to that, you know, it's you saying it's not their fault. But in essence, anybody that's in the 40C district is aware by now that they're in the 40C district. And we have sent letters before saying that if they're going to do any work on the property, they still need to come before us. So I don't understand why it's still an issue with homeowners and the building department. It's they have two. They have two properties in the 40C and they keep them very um, incredibly in good shape. So yeah. I'm thinking perhaps they didn't realize that the roof was part of this or I'm not 100% sure, but okay. I do feel like we police this and it's tiresome. Like I really feel like perhaps the flagging will work so when an address gets punched in so that it's alerted that it's in the 40C. Um, and I hope he goes through with that. I, I don't know any other way. I mean, we've created a map, we've given it to them so that they have it. We've even told them if any anyone that walks in with these four streets, just check them. <laughs> Automatic, exactly. Four yeah. street names, that's it. There should be yeah. something right on the counter. and. But do they need a a, a, a list laminated and uh, in bold yeah, colors? Yeah. They, <laughs> they had that. They have had that. Yeah. The, we've, we've done it. 
the flagging. I mean, at every other community that has an, uh, has, has a local historic district this is what they do. Um, and I, from experience with with Providence, because all the properties that my company has, they're all in historic districts, and um, with numerous different layers that we have to go through for approvals. So once we pull any type of permit on anything, there's a flag. We have to go see this commission or that commission. So they that should happen here. I don't know why. So from my knowledge, uh, IT in at City Hall is very, very backed up. Um, I so I think it's like one or two people, maybe. Um, so we have, maybe we do need to go over there with more lists, I guess, and with the addresses just to kind of hold them over until this can get fixed. It's only 47 houses. We could fit, fit that into a, you know, brightly colored sheets of paper. We, we can do that again, but that actually has been done. I know. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what they do with the lists. Um, you know, I had been there one time and, and I said, tape it down to the counter right here. Just tape it right here. Okay, that's what we'll do. Whether it got done, I don't know. Um, this was probably two years ago. I mean, this is this has been an ongoing. It's probably like everywhere else. You have signs up, you have things up, and you become pretty immune to looking at it. Like it means nothing. It, you know. So the flagging, I think, is probably the only way so that when you're entering an address, that it alerts you. Um, and IT, whether they're backed up or not, it's a priority. It's mm -hmm. You know, they need to make this a priority. So from what I from what I read online, um, they're going to be revamping the whole uh, the whole city website. And I, I don't know that that has anything to do with internally with the building department looking things up, but I'm sure they're going to be, you know, that's going to come up. Well, we're in the middle of blah, 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 doing this and and my. Um, my response to that will be, well, the building department's in violation of an ordinance in the city, so I think that takes precedence over, over yeah. numerous violations of the ordinance. Yeah. Have you, do you know what that process is? So you walk in and you say, hi, I want a permit for a new porch. Um, where does it go from there? Like who starts the process? I know ultimately one of the um, inspectors are the ones that sign it. Right. But and how do you get to them? They fill out an application. There's a, there's a paper that they fill out and they ask for the specs and then it gets turned into one of the building inspectors that I, that I know of. And then they either approve it or they, they don't approve it. And I'm not really sure. I don't really know in between anyone checking everything out that people are filling out in the application that it's all uh, legit. <laughs> I don't know. There's a checklist they're supposed to follow. And the weird thing is I will get emails sometimes um, from Carrie and she'll say so-and-so is uh, looking to do siding on this property or change the windows on that. Pro and none of these properties are even remotely near the historic district and I will still get, you know, is this allowed? Are they allowed to do this on random properties? But then in the district, it, things like this happen. So I, I honestly can't answer that question. I don't know what their rhyme or reason is and how they do anything. There is supposed to be a checklist. I know for demo, there's, there's a checklist because anything that's being demoed, although I shouldn't say anything because obviously we know in the past that that's happened as well. Um, there is supposed to, for demo anyway, they're supposed to follow the checklist and we, you know, we are one of the, the people that is supposed to sign off on that. So until, until we have signed off on something or until I send a letter saying this is not on the register or this is on the register, they need to come before us. Um, but as far as the other part of it, when they're looking to do a roof or a porch or anything like that, I don't know 
what the exact process is other than they're supposed to at least check well, to make sure it's not in the district. So, um, what happened to Alex? I don't know. I don't know. It says live on Facebook. Um, I don't, well, we're going to go on with our meeting. <laughs> um, on the, on the applications, um, I, I don't know how easy it is for them to change their forms. Is there a box they can add that says, is this address part of the 40 C district? And then with little, you know, bold letters, C, you know, table, blah, 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 for the list of addresses. And that's part of the, part of the form. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, just something, it's a foolproof method. I, it, I'm trying to, I would like to think it's foolproof, <laughs> um, but it forces at least the homeowner as they're checking or filling out their form. Yes, I am in the 40C district and that should throw a, fl uh, a red flag to whomever in building department that, oh, well, you know, you need to go see the HDC first. I don't know, Jason, you just gave me an idea. Maybe we could have color-coded forms for the district and others. And then those color-coded forms would identify themselves as they go through the process. That's, yeah, not, how the, that's not how the form is handed out. It's a blank form and you just yeah. put your address in there. So, so I yeah, understand so what you're we, saying, we, Joyce, I mean, we can't. We, yeah, we can't color code the forms. They come from the building department. So the only way that that could be done is if the building department has. So it still says it's being streamed on Facebook. So maybe I can do. I can just. Hi, yeah, Alex. Yeah. Wow. Alex, it oh, said no. something that recording has stopped, but it's still showing it live on Facebook. So I'm yeah, I got kicked out here. Um, I should be able to pull the file from Facebook, so it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so we can still go on. Yes, yes, sorry okay. about that. My okay. machine well, crashed, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, but what Jason's saying where if we add if we ask them to add a line to their application is yeah. is this in the 40 C yeah, recording stuff because I don't see why that yeah. well I was recording local, but it's still when I logged in it said this is still being live streamed. So Alex doesn't realize that his is uh Mike is on that's open to the public right yeah. yeah. Alex, you're not muted. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> All right. There, there we go. So um it, I mean that's what we can we can certainly do that. Ask them if there's a way to add it onto the application. Is this address in the 40 C district? Because I mean it makes absolute perfect sense. Are they going to overlook it? Who knows? <laughs> but at least yeah. it's still a step in the right direction, but whether or not they are willing to change their application is another story as well. Right. And flagging, I think flagging it in the system is also a good idea because then, you know, as new properties get added, if we, if we have new 40 C districts, then at least there's a way already in place. And so we have two, we have like, you know, two checks so that we can say, you know, okay, well, you, you missed this one, but there's this backup or, you know, you didn't, it, it's not in the system, but okay, you didn't look in the computer, but it's right here on the application. So those are certainly two, um, two good things. And I mean, I can go down, I can have another, um, I can have another meeting with Glenn. I, ha I haven't actually sat with Glenn in probably a couple of years. So I don't mind doing that. I know in the past, uh, I don't know if you recall, they did um, alter the application to- That was the demo. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're capable of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. They, I'm not saying they're not capable. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a matter of willing. Yeah. So, but I think knowing that this is probably the, I think at least the third time that now they've approved something that shouldn't have been approved. I think they would, they should be willing to uh, make an exception. 
in this case. And, um, you know, I can, I, I'll ask Frank what, what the story is with, with IT and if, if need be, I will reach out to IT uh, myself. But I, I think a meeting with Glenn would probably be in order at this point. It's been a couple of years, so. Any other suggestions, Ruben, Rick? No, that's that's fine. We can anything we try. Let's, let's see if it works again. Okay. Keep trying. Nothing on my end. All right. Um. Let's see. So next up, open discussion. Does anyone have anything? Any new? So I just, I have one thing. It just came in. I just got this email uh, like 20 minutes before the meeting. And it is from the architectural team. And I know um, if you remember, they came before us at the last meeting and they were looking for a letter of support because they were applying for um, an award. So the email says, hi all, we are excited to share that Knitting Mill Apartments has been awarded the two th a 2022 Paul and Nikki Songus Award. We are happy to see this project win some well-deserved recognition and appreciate your help with the award submission. So um, oh, congratulations to them. Yes, I, I think that's, that, that's great. So, um, so that's the only thing. Yeah, so that's the only thing I have. Um, it's nice to get the feedback. Yeah. Any anything else? Uh, just just quickly, uh, 262 French Street. Uh, they there were a couple of columns, and it's nothing but a four by four. And 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 the uh, the, the balusters and the railings were not touched. Okay. It, it appeared that the both two by fours at the bottom of the handrails were were rotted i guess and were replaced so it's like and kind and it was only those two columns and that was at 262 french street uh, but it's it's there was no changes and it was just two pieces of four by four you know probably four foot high on each side that would were, were changed out so and i just noticed it because it wasn't white it was nice fresh lumber so okay i mean still and that's it, one of the historic uh, homes so i guess there was no permit pulled probably not and i mean again it's still regardless of whether they're doing you know replacing in kind they are still <laughs> mm -hmm. so um i don't know maybe do we need to send another letter around reminding people because we have the one that says you know it's spring and this means that people are going to start doing work on the property and just a reminder if anything is being done you I'm really sure it wouldn't hurt okay does everyone agree yes I mean, we already have a letter, just update uh, uh, the date. We yep, we have, I mean, we have the letter and it just says, you know, this is you're in the district. If you're doing any work, you really need to reach out to us prior to anything being done, so. Yep, and Carrie has the addresses, so she should be able to do this. Yep, easily generate a list and, you know, of labels and mm -hmm. put them on. And I'm willing to go down there and do it. Just if she can print up the labels, I'm willing to stick them in the envelopes. So just to make sure that, you know, they all go out. So anything else? Uh, I will not be able to attend the April 19th meeting. Okay. I'm going to. I'll be out out of state. Okay, so um, maybe we can make it for a different date because without you, we don't have a, a quorum for the district. 
Well, if we could move it to the 18th, that would be fine. That would be a Monday, but um, that's only a suggestion. Okay, so Monday the 18th. Can I, can everybody do Monday the 18th? Oh, actually, let me look because I don't think I can do that. Date. Hold on, let me check. Um, I have to file my taxes that day. <laughs> oh, well, then I get that. Um, no, I can make it if it's available, if everyone else is available. <laughs> Is that celebrated as a holiday? Because my phone says it's Easter Monday. So I don't even, I don't know if they. I don't think I don't, so. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think it's a federal or state mm -hmm. holiday. Okay. So, I mean, that's the day after Easter, but if you wanna, is that school vacation? Does that matter to anyone? April vacation? No, April vacation is the week after the 25th or the 29th. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. Um, I always thought it was right after Easter. Huh. Okay. All right. So can everyone do the 18th instead? I can. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Patriots Day. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. Is it really? Yeah, I just it that. says tax day and Easter Monday, but it doesn't say anything about Patriots Day. Yeah, I just Googled it. The Monday, April 18th. So then it is a holiday? Yeah. Okay. So City Hall will be closed and yeah. So if we did it, if we did it the week before, or or could we push it up to the week after? I'm just thinking of, about the um the guidelines, I think, is really what's pressing. So April 12th, Tuesday, April 12th, mm -hmm. can we do that? Sure. For me, it's OK. I can do it. Works for me. I can do it. Joyce, Tuesday, yeah, April 12th? That's fine. That's fine. OK. Um, Alex, are you there? Yep. Do, do you have anything scheduled for Tuesday, April 12th for Zoom? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. So can we, we'll try and, and book it. I don't know if the room is available. I can see if the room is available um, to do in person, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure because I think that's also I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's the Tuesday city council meets as well. So even like around that time, parking gets sketchy depending. Um, but we'll we'll go with Tuesday, April 12th. I'll see if the room is available. And if not, we'll do Zoom as a backup, unless you prefer to do Zoom. It's some, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me. If, if Zoom works, we already know Alex has the date open, so. If it's an option, um... Just looking at my my calendar, um, I probably will not be able to do an in person. I can do Zoom though. Okay, so the twelfth, we'll do Zoom then. Sounds good. April twelfth Zoom meeting. Alex, does that work? Okay. Okay, so April twelfth will be our next meeting, and we will do that by Zoom. And that will be at six o'clock. And uh, if nobody has anything else, then I will entertain a motion to end the meeting. And we get that we got that right to exactly one hour. Very good. And that's seven p.m. So can I, so I know. So can I get a motion from the historical commission? I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, I have a, a motion. I have a motion and a second. Historical Commission roll call. Connie Soule. Yes. Joyce Rodericks. Yes. Rick Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliveri. Yes. Can I get a motion from the Historic District Commission? 
A motion. Make a motion. Two. Adjourn. Okay, a motion and a second to adjourn. Connie Sewell? Yes. Rick Mantini? Yes. Jason Busha and Naraki? Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliver? Yes. So, uh, motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and hopefully, we'll see you next month. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you.